sketchbook entries happen as a um, memory. Very rarely do they get made directly after an experience. Sometimes, maybe a day or so later, I might do that. But sometimes it's uh, a reference to an experience I might have had many years in the past, and I've been thinking about it. I think most surfers will agree that there are certain experiences that happen when you're surfing that are so intense that they are sort of like a flash image that gets engraved into your mind and into your soul, like a freeze frame. And those never leave you. In high school, somebody gave me a copy of Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks, and um, I read those from, that, from cover to cover. It was a very, very interesting, um, compelling collection of descriptions of nature, how to paint things, inventions, um, all sorts of odds and ends uh, collected together. It had a big influence on me, and I started doing my own kind of journal, sketchbook, collection of ideas, drawings, and so forth. So it really started back then. The way I do the sketches usually is just, I have different sketchbooks. Um, They've been of every description, and a lot of the drawings are just done with ballpoint pen. Uh, often I go back with colored pencil and bring out some color, and they're usually the water-soluble kind, so I can use a brush to mix the, the images and make it look more watery. In 2009, I had some time on my hands, so I got an intern to help me, and the two of us scanned about 800 sketches from all of my sketchbooks going back 50 years or so. And um, as we were doing this, I realized that there was a continuing thread of really interesting surf experiences. Um, so by the time we finished scanning them, I pretty much decided I was going to pull the surf sketches out and uh, make those into a, into a book. One of the interesting things about the book is that um, there's these cross threads between surfing in the ocean and other experiences. And I think a good example of that is back in 1995, I went down to Laguna to stay with a friend. I had a film job filming a band at the Coach House, I think. And I was gonna stay with my friend, Michael Yankus, who also was a surfer. And so we went surfing the day before my shoot at Trestles. And we surfed for a couple of hours. And at the end of that, I, I rode a wave all the way in. At the end, I just kind of fell off in the white water and pushed off from the bottom to surface. And as my foot pushed against the sand bottom, the sort of hand-like thing wrapped around my left foot. And of course, it scared me, and I yanked my foot which scared the stingray, and he zapped me on the top of my left foot, and man, that was so painful. Uh, and, I, and the electric shock part of it was really intense, and I think had that been in my upper body, it might have killed me, actually. It was really, it must have been a big stingray. I then had to go on two shoots in a row. One was in Maui, and it was for a spiritual organization. The second shoot was in Mexico, and it was, a, I think, three TV shows about the Maya and the Toltecs. And so I brought to Maui a book about the Mayan people to learn more about it, because we were going to Palenque, which is a very fascinating Mayan temple area. So I was reading the book while I was in Maui, discovering for the first time the waves of Maui, which were fantastic. and had a lot of sort of, to me, they had a lot of spiritual mojo kind of energy, especially down by the lava flow part of southern Maui. What I discovered reading these books about the Maya was that the stingray spine 
is a major ritual implement, was a major ritual implement in some of their ceremonies. And um, it was like an initiation kind of thing. And um, we actually ended up recreating one of those, the Stingray Spine Ceremony when we were filming in Palenque with some Mayan Indians and um, it involved piercing the skin. The king would do this and with everybody all arrayed in the big plazas, thousands of people, and the blood from the piercings of the skin would drip onto ceremonial paper that was over a charcoal brazier. And so when that would burn, it would have some kind of magical properties. Who knows what they were up to. But the upshot of this for me was that it felt like a kind of initiation for me, having been stung by the stingray, being introduced to the whole Maui sort of Pele energy um, surf thing and the spiritual organization for whom I was doing this filming. And then going to Teotihuacan, which of course is a Toltec, amazing mystical ceremonial city really and then down to Palenque which again was the same thing with a whole different kind of energy so I felt like this was an initiation that came from surfing and surfing kind of had threaded its way through so in this way the surfing experiences I've had are very much tied into other aspects on top of that there's the athletic experience, which is somewhere between dancing and flying, and um, it has a grace and a kind of connection to pure energy that's very, very rare to encounter in life generally. And um, that's addictive. And it, 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 when you get good enough to be able to do that over and over again, um, you just want more. And I believe that it does transform you a little bit each time you get into the tube or have a really great ride or you just have that experience of seeing the wall stretching out ahead of you and you just know you're in the perfect spot and maybe you run your hands along the face of the wave as you're going. Um, man. It's a really magical, transformative kind of experience. And I am very grateful that I never quit and that I'm still able to, to do it at a reasonable level. I've never been, you know, a great surfer or anything, but I've been good enough to have great experiences. And for me, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm.